Hey everybody, I'm the Anime Trainer, and today we're going to be looking at one of the manliest men to ever man about town. Major Alex Luis Armstrong. <laughs> This guy is big, ripped, and strong as hell! We don't really see Major Armstrong train during Full Metal Alchemist or Brotherhood, but based on his physique, his style of alchemy, and the approximate time period in which he lived, we can infer about the type of training he would have done to get as strong as he is. So let's take a closer look at that. Major Armstrong, the strong arm alchemist uses his muscly body and combat abilities to hurl chunks of stone at his opponents, but he also occasionally punches them in the face. <laughs> Today though, we're going to really focus on the stone aspect to build a rock hard body. First things first, you're going to need at least one big rock and one smaller rock. That smaller rock is going to be one that you should be able to lift with one hand, but not necessarily easily. Uh, the first few times you attempt this workout, you're going to spend a little bit of time figuring out which rocks you can use for which lifts. Then, ideally, you should have a weight sled. I made a video about making your own weight sled, and you can check that out right here. Uh, if you don't have a weight sled, that's okay. You can do most of the workout without that piece of equipment. You also have the option of doing all of these exercises with traditional dumbbells and barbells, but honestly, to me, that just kind of ruins the fun for this one. So, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is get warmed up. You should spend 5 to 10 minutes walking to get started. And if you don't have a warm up that you would normally do following that, check out the real anime training warm up right here. Following that, the body should be primed for movement and we will get to the warm up for the lifting. We're going to do 10 to 15 reps of some light rock deadlifts and light rock clean and press. For the deadlifts, make sure that you're keeping your back straight and moving by breaking back at the hips. You see, it's not a squat. As I bend over, my chest is pointing more toward the ground. Next, for the ground to overhead, we will start in a similar position to the deadlift, but with a bit more speed. You'll use this momentum to get the rock into a position to press, control the weight back down, and repeat for 10 to 15 reps. All right, time to pick up the heavy stuff. Your goal here is to do as much work as possible in 90 seconds. You're going to AMRAP that, that means as many reps as possible, in 90 seconds per exercise. It's okay if you do a couple of reps and have to breathe for a second. We're picking up really heavy and awkward weights for time. It's going to happen. Start the clock and do your best for 90 seconds. We'll talk about scaling the workout at the end. First exercise is stone deadlifts. The main difference between the warm-up deadlifts and this one is that you're going to need to keep a lot more tension in your core as you do the lift. Flat back, neutral neck, straight arms. Move with the hips. At the beginning, don't try to pick up something that you aren't sure that you can lift. Form is more important than anything, and injuring yourself is a no-go. The next exercise is stone cleans. This is just like the clean with the smaller rock, but you'll need a lot more power. You can either hug the rock at the top of the movement or just hold it up with both hands. You don't have to control it back down, but be careful when you do drop the stone. If you are unable to clean the rock all the way to the chest, do the best that you can for the allotted time period. You will improve over time, and alternatively, you can always use a slightly smaller rock for the cleans. The next exercise is stone squats. You can use the bigger rock or the smaller rock, the main difference here being how many reps you'll be able to do and how you might have to hold the stone. It was much easier to hug this big rock during the squats than to try to hold it up. Chest up, eyes forward, weight in your heels as you squat. Avoid collapsing your knees inward toward the midline of your body. Try to get at least tops of thighs parallel on this squat. If you cannot hit depth, you will need a lighter weight to work on your mobility. If you cannot hit depth with weight, you should start with normal body weight squats. The next exercise is stone ground to overhead. We call it ground to overhead because it doesn't really matter how you get it up over your head uh, as long as you do so. I really recommend doing a clean and press or a clean and push press with the bigger rock. Make sure that you have a good hold on the rock and you can just let the rock come forward uh, and you take a step back to put it down. Don't worry about trying to control it back down. 
The first part of the movement is just like the clean, but then you'll have to keep your elbows in and drive the rock up and over your head, either in a strict press or using your hips and knees for a push press. If you are unable to get the weight all the way over your head, just do your best and make sure that you're not going to drop it. The next exercise is stone carries. And this exercise begins just like the clean. You'll have to get the weight to your chest and carry it as far as you can in the 90 second time period. Keep your core tight and maintain good posture. The best option for this carry is most likely the hug position that you use for the stone squats. The next exercise is stone rows. The beginning of this exercise is very similar to the deadlift. Once you get the weight off the ground though, keep your back straight, nearly perpendicular to the ground. Pull through the elbows as far as you can and then straighten the arms all the way. Repeat for the allotted time. The next exercise is stone swings and it's time to break out the smaller rock for the rest of the workout. Holding the stone with both hands, break back slightly at the hips and squeeze your butt hard to move your hips. It's a fast explosive movement. Squeeze your butt like you accidentally held it too close to a fire. This is an explosive explosive movement. The arms are just chains holding onto the weight. They're not doing any work. You should not squat, nor should you excessively hinge this movement. You're making a little triangle with your hip, shoulder, and knee as the points, and you're going to explosively close that triangle by bringing your hips back to natural standing posture. The next exercise is stone presses. Stone presses can be with the bigger rock or the smaller rock, so one-handed to two-handed. If two-handed, like with the clean and press, control the weight and do your best to not put it down for the 90 second time period. It sucks to have to pick it back up again. If you're using the smaller rock, focus on balancing the weight. Use your weaker side first and match the reps on the other side. If you're doing one arm presses, do 90 seconds on each side. The next exercise is stone curls. For this, we're going to start with a two-handed curl for 90 seconds. Elbows at your sides, full extension of your arms at the bottom, and full flexion of the arm at the top. Controlled movement, do not swing the weight. After the 90 seconds, you're going to try to curl the rock with one hand, however you can grab it, for as many reps as you can on each side. Start with your weaker arm and match it on the strong side. The next exercise is stone throws. You can throw the stone any way you like, just throw it as hard as you can and then run to pick it up. You still only have 90 seconds, so get a move on it. Be careful though not to hit anything. I accidentally broke off part of my big rock. Rest in peace, Big Rock. Destruction and creation are two sides of the same coin. You must destroy to create. All right, the last exercise for the stone lifting section uses the biggest rock you can find. We're going to push the earth away from ourselves. We're going to do push-ups. So rest if you need to. Just make sure that you can do as many good form push-ups in 90 seconds as possible. Let's go! All right, for the next exercise, we're going to break out the weight sled. Uh, we're going to do sled hand over hand pulling. Fill the sled so that it's relatively heavy for you and let's get to work. Squat down a little bit and pull the full range of motion on each arm one after the other. When you get to the end of the rope, extend it out again and go again until the time is up. Hand over hand, 90 seconds. The next exercise is sled chest press. Since the only chest work that we did for this workout was the push-ups, let's go ahead and add some additional work with a real heavy sled. Grab each of the handles of the sled, brace your core, and put one foot forward. Keep your palms facing inward and tuck your elbows. Press out and away to do the repetition, and then take a step through to reset and repeat for the allotted time. All right, the last exercise is a sled drag. We're going to strap those handles of the sled over your shoulders and walk forward. Keep your core tight and be deliberate with your steps. Squeeze your butt on every single step and just keep moving. Ah, but wait, there's more! Turn around, put the handles over your shoulders again, and pull that sucker backward to really put some fire in those quads. 90 seconds, and you are done. And that's it. A full body workout for raw, real world strength in the spirit of the strong arm alchemist. If you're new to stone lifting, start lighter. The weights are awkward and seem heavier than they actually are. Now as you start to become more comfortable, you can lift heavier stones or focus on getting more reps in the 90 second period. That's really up to you. We're going to start with doing only one set of 90 seconds for each exercise. After a few months of training, if your stone begins to feel too light and you don't have access to a heavier stone, you can experiment with doing a second set starting at 30 seconds of work and increasing slowly over time. As with anything, the road to the top is slow, so please do not try to rush this. 
If you already have a program, you can use this workout as a strength conditioning workout once a week to work stabilize your muscles and apply your gym strength to the real world. If you'd like to make this your primary strength workout, start with two times a week with some other days being cardio of your choice or maybe even yoga. However, this is not going to be the only Armstrong workout. We're going to make a couple more so you can have a full Armstrong program, but until then, become familiar with this one. It's a lot of new skills to learn, and uh, I want you to take your time with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That workout was super, super hard to do. Um, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Uh, this is not the only Armstrong workout that we're going to be doing, uh, so look forward to that. And until next time, guys, good luck and train hard.